a pile of striped bass sitting right there. Snotchel, that's right, it's snotchel. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this one. I do appreciate it. This is another episode in my Right Here, Right Now series. We already did trolling and shallow planer boards and floats and downlines, and all those are available in my playlist there for uh, Right Here, Right Now. And this one is cut bait. Uh, if you're new to striper fishing or maybe you've struggled, this can be your money maker right here. This is one of the most fun ways to catch them. It's great for the family. You can get the family out there and barbecue even. And uh, once you get set up, and I mean, you just have a blast. You can catch lots of stripers and catfish. Some of these lakes in the south have monster blue cats. and uh, You kind of catch everything. So it's really good family type fishing, you know. So right now... We're in the fall spawn for freshwater, the lakes, as the fall comes and the water gets cool. Almost every lake has a strong fall spawn. That's when the stripers feel the urge to move to the upper end of the lake. And they'll spend some time there and then move back down and do their, their thing in spring. But right now, you can have 100 fish days doing this. So wherever lake you're on, get to the upper end and just camp out and stay there. So this video here is going to show you how I look for spots. This video has a freshwater section and a saltwater section in both. And uh, I know I say it all the time, and I'm not sure if you guys really believe me when I say it's the same. I mean, it really is the same. It's the same saltwater fish, just one's in a lake, one's in the ocean. So all this stuff can apply either way. All right, I hope you guys enjoy this one. There's tons of good info in here, fresh and salt. I even show how we catch bait in both uh, situations. I mean, from setting the hook with a circle hook to everything is in here. It's all here. Hope you guys dig it. Please uh, put a message on here. Uh, thumbs up and a little, uh, you know, sub little subscription action will really help me out, guys. And there is a, a Patreon set up. So if you'd like to support us further, really appreciate it if you guys would take a look at that patreon it's uh the link will be in the uh, description and all these but we're putting really cool stuff on a patreon a little at a time stuff some stuff that i can't put on youtube or some stuff that's maybe uncut unedited uh so we put it up there i really do hope uh you guys get something out of this please go out there and catch a lot of fish guys be safe on the water leave a few for me love you mean it when it's inside 10 you go ahead and rip it Okay, hold on, it's closed. It's up against those pilings. You can see these pilings. Hard throw. Good and hard. Pilings. Pop off. Will it pop off? Uh, hope it pops off. Will it pop off? Net just missed him. Pull it in. Oh, you got a couple. You got a couple. My call, I think you got a couple. Yeah, there's a few in there. Yep. Dude, how crazy is that? That time I saw it go down, the bait swam out, but a couple of them got caught. We can see those baits kind of swim up and do this as the school moved. So I knew he had a few in there. So we'll see if we can position him even better this time. Look at that. All right. Look here, Eric, Eric. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. You got him! <laughs> nice. Look here, Eric, Eric. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. You got him! <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, it's loaded, bro. Look at that, look at that net. Enough. Do we need to rail dump some of that? Uh, potentially, probably. We're gonna double anchor on the hump, set out some chunks, and catch a whole bunch of really, really healthy striped bass. But if you look here by that chart, where that hump is, where all the lines are close together, that's that contour. And what I like to do is put the front anchor on the hump, We'll pull off, stretching out that front line, and then Mike will drop a stern line. All right, see the hump coming up here? Right here. Give me one second, Tommy. I want to make sure I see the fish before I uh, put that anchor down. All right, I'm gonna show you real quick on the map where to get started. You're gonna have three spots to try. This will work in any lake, okay? So right here, you're gonna see, this is the main river channel. 
the main stem, we call this the main lake. So on your lake where the river channel is, that's the main lake, okay? So then you're gonna have these creeks. You got one here, you got a big one here, smaller ones. Okay, let's, let's go to this creek right here, okay? So you're gonna start, your first spot is gonna be a point on the main lake. So you can see that point right at the tip of my finger, okay? On your map, when you get close, you'll see all these fine lines here. Where the lines are very close together, like let's see down here, it might be easier to see. You see where all these lines are, the little fine lines? Where they're close together, that means it's a steep drop off. So you wanna anchor your boat in those fine lines, in the drop off, so you can cast out deep and cast up on the point. So this is your first main lake point, try here. Set up for an hour, a little more. You don't get any takers, you move to your second spot. Your second spot will be a secondary point. Any of these points near the front of the creek, but up in the creek. So you're gonna try any one of these little points right here. Again, anchor your boat on the transition. So if it's 30 foot here and it's two foot here, anchor between that, that's the transition, okay? Give it an hour, no touches. You're gonna to go to your third spot. Third spot's gonna be the point way in the back of the creek. Between those three spots, you're gonna find fish. Side scan is very important for this because we're very shallow. When you're shallow, your regular sonar has a very narrow, narrow cone. It doesn't look at very much water, so side scan is the ticket. So you've got lots of bait in the area. That's all bait in the area there, too. But we know there's bass in here, and that's what we're looking for. I'm going to show you what a, what a parking lot full of straight bass looks like here in a minute. Okay. There we go. Found them. Remember what I said about red zone fish, guys. Fish shallow water near deep water. This hump comes up to six feet deep, and there's 25, 30 feet all the way around it. That's money. Stand by, Tommy. Go up to the front. Actually, look, look right here. Look at all those fish right there. Those are all striped bass. They're on the hump. They moved up onto the hump. That's crazy. That's where they went. Hundreds of them. They're all up on top of the hump in only six feet of water. That's why we couldn't find them. Look at them chasing. Those white marks, they're, they're moving. Awesome. All right, so we came through here on the lower hump, marked them, went and got bait, come back a half hour later, couldn't find them. They actually moved up onto the hump. Stand by, Tommy. Let her go. All right, now, he didn't throw that anchor until I had the boat going in reverse. Right now, Mike is getting the stern anchor ready on the stern line. And I want to back, back off just till we get off to the edge of the hump. You'll notice Tommy's paying out line. And the goal is to set the boat on a transition. So we don't want the boat up on the hump. We want to, see us look at those stripers right there. We want to be on the edge of the hump. So we can cast up on the hump and we can cast into deeper water. He's still paying out. Bottom's starting to drop down. We're almost on the contours. Looking good, looking fishy. All right, so contours are there. So we want Mike to drop his anchor in about 10 feet. All right, Mike, let it go. And Mike's letting it off the side, not the stern, not by the transom. Why, Mike? There's a lot of expensive equipment behind there. That's right, all that transom. Yeah, at this, man. Look at this fish finder, John. That's what you call a pile of striped bass sitting right there. Snotchel, that's right, a snotchel. That's a full snotchel. Wow. Okay. So you see, I don't know if you guys noticed how long, you, obviously you can't feel how long that was, but we, even after we marked the fish, we still spent another 20, maybe 25 minutes making sure we're on it just right. Now Mike's gonna get a little bit out already, Mike? Yep. All right, Tom, you can take a little in, just to tighten it up. He's gonna pay some out on the, stern, on the stern while Tommy takes a little bit in on the bow. And the idea is to get those lines nice and tight. We want a lot of fish, which is good, but don't anchor ever off the stern unless you are experienced unless you're confident 
unless you studied the uh, the rule. I'm sorry, the applications that are on the Coast Guard website because anchoring off the stern is only done in situations like this. We're in a harbor. Why is that? That's probably good, Tommy. Hmm? What happens anchoring off the stern? If you anchor in the stern in any kind of stand me with that. If you anchor off the stern in any kind of weather, even a two foot or one, well, even a one foot chop in some boats and if we lose the front anchor for some reason and you swing your stern will be aiming into the waves so you'll have waves crashing up against your transom it'll fill your boat it'll roll you right over it'll kill you i had a friend almost die in a few years ago where he was anchored off the front he left the boat in gear he thought he was in neutral the boat crawled forward it was in a big chop he didn't know the boat crawled forward and got the line front line in the prop it wrapped in the prop stalled the motor and now when it swung, now the anchor is tied to his prop, right? So it swung him around. As soon as the anchor set, the first wave came over, rolled his boat over. In wintertime, 44 degree water in, in North Carolina. Almost killed him. So I'm at a hook it, John. Okay, so here's what you have to do. You have to lift the scale prior to putting it through. Otherwise, you lose the point of the hook. When a hook comes out, there'll be a scale from the opposite side. You have to remove it. You hook it through the thin silver part of the meat, which gives the fish the opportunity to pick it up, and the gap of the hook is able to work better because there's less meat in the way. We are getting ready to net some bait here, but we haven't seen any bait flipping, and all the bait we're seeing is deep. Uh, you can see as soon as we get to that drop off deeper than 20 feet, we start to see it. It's on side scan, there's lots of it, so it shouldn't be hard to get. But it is deep, which presents a whole new challenge throwing a net, you know? You got to make sure you're really on it because your net's going to close by the time it gets down there. So you have to be really precise on your throws. So let's see what we can do. Oh, man, you're nicking the boat, but man, is it open. <laughs> You've got your shoes on, you have just enough height to not hit the boat. <laughs> Hard to beat that. There's, a, there's the cast net. Did he get it? He, he was on a few. <laughs> Definitely got a few. Here's a net coming up. Hey. There we go. <laughs> oh, and we just killed them all. I scared every crappie out of here for these guys. I can pick them all up. Get here, fellas. The thread pin. And the gizzard. All right, you can see here. That's all bait and stripers. You can see the stripers here. The hard dashes and then these small ones here. Small haze, that's shad. It's funny because we're trying to net bait and there's uh, stripers sitting on this bait. So we're not going to go far once we start fishing. Net ledge. We're done. We're done. All right, well, we just got our bait. We're back here in these S turns here in the back of this creek. Okay. We netted bait right here, and we marked so many striped bass and crappie and all kinds of big, big marks all the way through here. That this point right here, we're going to cut bait right here, right by our bait. I'm just going to idle up here. We're going to tie off to one of these trees double anchor the boat and we're going to set them out on the chunk if you don't net bait if you don't know how to net bait you can go to a bait shop you can go to a, you know your gas station in the south here they always have those bass minnows you can get bass minnows work great no problem uh, even at the grocery store if you want to get chicken livers 
Now, when I was a kid, we used chicken livers, and uh, we actually call a lot of stripers that way. It's kind of funny how they'll really key into the stench of that chicken liver and pick it up. A lot of guys up north still doing it. A couple of these have weights. Couple of them in. We don't really need the weight right here because we don't have a lot of current right here, but if you do, just use one ounce if you can get away with it. Go as light as possible. No free spool, engage it, full drag, click around. Yes. Okay. We have mono on everything here. Soft tip rods, striper stealth rods, real soft tip. Mono line, very stretchy. And the idea is the fish can swim by, pick up your bait. It won't feel the rod tip because the rod tip is buttery soft. The line even stretches because it's mono fish can pick up the bait and start to swallow it swim off and as he swims out off he'll pull that circle hook up out of its stomach it's an inline circle which is the law now and that hook will catch him right in the corner when he feels it he's going to take off and by the time he does the rods are reloaded and here he took all the stretch out of the line that's exactly what we want so if you're doing this with braid i'm not saying you can't catch fish doing it lots of people do but you're at an extreme disadvantage if you're chunking with braid any live any type of bait with braid is bad because the braid is very sensitive it's no stretch you can feel the fish but the fish can feel you and you don't need to, to feel the fish if you put it in a rod holder so no point in having the braid unless you have bad line capacity and need to thin braid for line capacity other than that you want mine all right guys here's a close look at the rig here it's just a basic carolina rig you have a barrel swivel here and anywhere from two to four feet of leader down to your circle hook here. This is a Mustad Demon Circle. It has a straight shaft. I prefer a straight shaft with no snells. It's just what I prefer. It's a regular clinch knot here because this is mono, but if you're using fluorocarbon, use something like a Palomar knot. And you could change your length here depending on, you know, how clear the water is. You want a longer leader in clear water. But if you go too long, you can't cast well. So this is probably about four foot. That's a good basic place to start. This is 30 pound mono on 30 pound mono. Some people ask why do you use a swivel if the leader material is the same strength? And the reason is because in current, or if you're just reeling the bait in, your chunk will spin and it'll twist your line up. So always use a swivel, even if it's just a dead piece of bait and you're using the same leader material. Now these three glass beads, I always use glass beads with live bait because I like the noise it makes. Uh, these are the wrong size though. Sometimes it's very hard to find the larger size. If you find a larger size with a hole that slides over your knot, it will protect your knot some. In this situation it really won't protect it, it's just going to slam into it just like the lead will. You don't need beads for cut bait. But we swap these rigs out for live and cut bait at certain times, so I have a habit of putting beads on all of them. Also, in current, these will make some noise if the bait is, you know, being slammed around on the bottom with the current. So it can't hurt to put them on. This is just a two ounce weight here. We go anywhere from one to three usually, and if I can go with zero, I go with zero. Again, this is just a Carolina rig. This is a, a very commonly used rig, and it's my favorite rig striped bass fishing you can use a what's called a fish finder attachment goes on here it's just a sinker slide if you want to uh, it'll have a clip on it so you can change out your weights so you can go to heavier and lighter during the day it's just a little sleeve that pops on here with a clip hanging on it and the sleeve slides it's called a fish finder weight clip or just a fish finder rig but that's it right there you can see it's a large this is about an 8 ot demon circle I usually go pretty large with uh, circle hooks and uh, depending on my cut but bait uh, piece but anywhere between 7 and 9 knot is a good place to go with a chunk. If you're in fresh water using smaller pieces of like cut herring or something like that you might go all the way down to like a 2 knot, depending on how finicky or how small the fish are. Ron you see a rod bend over? Okay. If you see a rod bend over if it's scree if you hear the rod clicking, taking out drag, just pick it up and fight the fish.
if it's bending over and it's not clicking yet you want to crank first so just just go right to the reel and just crank it until you can't crank it anymore it starts to click and then take out the rod holder so if it's clicking just pick it up if it's not clicking just crank until it does click you know what i'm saying yeah the weight. <clears throat> one more on that side, one more on that side. All right, I'll meet you at the bow. Yes, sir. Three, two, two. Nope. Lock it down, baby. Right, it's got me a chunk. See, we do have some current now, so uh, the ones with weight, we're going to keep up current. This doesn't have weight, so we're going to have to reset it. Yep. See that? Yeah, what was that? It's a sliding weight. So sometimes when you cast the weight and the bait separate, and right before the bait the weight hits the water, if you stop it, it'll stretch a line, spring it, and throw the weight again. So you can, only with sliding weight. Nice work. Let me have the camera. I got a first guy over here. You got it? Oh, there you go. There you go. Just stay on him. Yeah. Just look through there. You'll be good. Okay. Get okay. it on top. Just like a bass. Come on. Show me a, show me a pin. You saw it? Yeah. Got a big head like a striper. A striper. Oh. Hey, all right. Oh. I might bring it. That's all right. Just back up. Just bring it right to the Tommy. We've lost so many strikers all of a sudden. That was right in the corner of the mouth. That one ain't getting away. Keep that line tight. That's what you got it, John. Good job. Yep. Yeah. Under the anchor line, you're okay. Let's see. Yeah, some break out. You're good. You're good. Coming right, right back. It's coming right back, bro. Gotta put this in the holder over there. Don't jump. Come on. Show me splines on that. It's right in the glare. I didn't see it. He's got lines on his side. Grab that net out of your head, Mike. Oh, yeah. Yeah, get him. Crank, 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 John. Crank, crank, crank. See you, Ron? Oh, he's on. See? He's on. It's going to go nuts here another hour. Or two. Fish. That's a nice size fish. John, yours is off? Beautiful fish, Tommy. Good job. 
Oh, that's right. He's yeah, right. I close. Yeah, he's <laughs> Two towards off the injured reserve list. <laughs> It's a pretty fish, though. Look at it. It's not a big one. There you go. Come on, baby. It's a circle hook. You're not going to shake it, so. Come on, Captain. I take care of it. Look at it. Look at it. Come on. There, it's adorable. He's gorgeous. <laughs> it's a baby. <laughs> Get in my belly! Get in my belly! There you go. Good job. Beautiful, thank you. Good job, brother. Back off the injured reserve list. In the harbor. Good job. I'm going to take a minute and show you the size chum we like to use. Right now we're using three piece baits. We're cutting our bunkers in three pieces. Uh, that's pretty rare for us. We usually do halves uh, or holes. And the reason we want that big bait out there is because when striped bass uh, are moving around and roaming through this big flat area, when they come by, they may be here and gone. So we want to catch the biggest fish in that school. So the, you know, the thinking is the bigger the bait, you know, you automatically uninclude those five, eight, 10 pound fish and then we're looking for those uh, fish that are bigger. That's about as small as we go. And this is even pretty small. This is the size chum, if you look here on the board. That's the size chum we want. We don't want little tiny pieces that go through the grinder. We want that right there, like a peanut M&M. And then we'll throw it out. And the idea is to get a blanket. The idea is to get a blanket of chum everywhere. So when that school roaming through here comes by, it stops here to pick up those little pieces. And our big baits can only be taken down by the biggest fish in that school. So that's the theory behind it, and it, uh, you know, it usually works out that way. We don't, we don't catch many five pounders on a whole bunker, you know. So here we go, glob lobber. We normally have the grinder out here with a sausage plate on it that makes these nice big pieces, but we don't have it today. But we still have the glob lobber. It's a tennis ball thrower for taking your dog apart. We don't want it too far out. We don't want it too far from the boat. Uh, but we want a nice blanket around us. We want pieces that are going to stay. Use those tiny pieces. They get taken and washed away in the current. No good. If the current is really ripping hard here, we won't chum at all. Because the current gets, just takes your chum away and it could take your fish away. And there's really not a whole uh, lot of sense in doing that, right? So the current is slack. We chum like nuts. And the current runs. We don't chum anymore. Load me up, Tommy. We don't chum like nuts, you know, we'll put out maybe a whole bunker every 30 minutes or something like that. Not, not too much. Alright, that's it. That's all they're getting right now. I'd like to smoke some garlic on mine, please. That's it. It's our carpet of chum. Blah, blah, blah. Now available at Toys R Us near you, even though Toys R Us has gone out of business. Chuck it. Chuck it. Yeah. That really, that really fixes that problem usually. <clears throat> All right, got some obstacles. You got this. Take it, take it, go, go. Good one. I think this is the best. You might need to pump a little. So pull up and I could look at Yeah, screamer. I think we got a good one, guys. Oh, yeah. I'm a little bit of both of you guys. You take that good. That's a good one. Good, huh? That is a good fish. 
Oh, it's about time. Ronnie, don't try and horse That's it. Play him easy now, you got him close. Good job! Nice good job. Fish. That's a good one. Yeah. It's pretty. It's finicky today, man. Right in the corner of the mouth. It's that demon circle, that owner demon circle. There you go. Good one, Ron. All right, now stick it out to me. Got it. All right, record him, let him go. Should I just drop him in there? Yep, go a little closer if you like that. There you go, you just like that, there you go. Good job, brother. Good call on staying, Big Mike. Screamer. <laughs> Screamer. Oh, that's a howler, man. See if I can poke one. <laughs> Oh, he's off. Oh, no. Oh. It sucks. Had to be a bluefish. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, blue. it's it bluefish for sure. It's a small one. Had to be. At least he didn't break this one off. Oh, still got the piece. Slide anchor on it. Cast the egg sinker slides really far. Right before the egg sinker hits you, stop the spool, it'll throw the egg back over to the bait. Yeah. You cast with a fish finder? Huh? Casting with a fish finder? From the beach. Gotcha. Live line, like in the late summer, you get a lot of those spots. Somebody is sleeping on a jump job. I don't know who you're talking about. Is that what that is? Fishing on credit. This is your own credit. Go right over the top. Okay, it's coming. Striper. Yeah. Yep. Got the net. Keep it away from the grill. Who got the net? Who got the net? He made, he made short work for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, what the heck? Woo, almost Forming lost him. Nearly. Yeah, I swear to God, look. Look at his top eye. He's right by the... Right by that. Barely anything. Stick it out to me real quick. Adorable. Listen, me holding this fish does no justice. I know it. There you go. Good job. Radio edit. Ooh. Wow, that water looks really clear today. Jeff Bass, that fish shot off. What are you making here, bro? Why oh, don't, dude? Oh. Is actually, does anybody want the hot pepper? I mean, it, it might be blazing hot, but there's one. I'm gonna eat it. Nice. I got another one. Hot pepper for anyone? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll keep, keep the guy right away. No less skimming on that one. Coming to yours. There he is. Oh, it's up here. oh yeah, there he is. Keep going. We swing with it. He's a bluefish? Wow. Yeah. Uh, Everything's gone, I can feel it. Any harbor in the storm, right? Total, total protection. That's why the fish get stuck in here so long. 
Oh yeah? Yeah. There's only one way in, one way out. That little bottom leg. They were right? I thought it was a shark. I saw the, the dorsal thing. Yeah. Huh? Oh, so the 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 oh yeah. You ever see the video when the guys see it in, up in Boston? <laughs> They're like, it's a tuna, Jay. It's a fucking tuna. And then one guy goes, no, it's a flounder. It's a hysterical video. They made it on the internet and they went on Letterman and Leno and because ah, okay. they they saw one and their reactions hysterical. They're like, kill it. You know what's funny? We can get rad. It's a tuner. Tuner. It was alien looking to see, man. Yeah. yeah. They changed the, They changed what they thought it was like five times. Plans, Ronnie. John, get away. <laughs> Run, go. Right, easy, go, easy, go. Right. Oh, that's a good one, Ronnie. Easy. Take your time, Ronnie. Oh, Keep that line tight. Oh. Take your time. That's it. That's it. Bring, him, bring him right to him. Good work. Good work. Good work. Oh, 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 nice, hey, Ronnie. Hey, good nice. job. Mike, you gotta get in the picture with this. All right. one. Cool. Good fish, Ronnie. Hello. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's what we need. Wow, man. Striper <laughs> stealth rods, man. Bait, cut bait, live bait, small bait, big bait. If it's bait, the striper stealth rods are great, man. Super soft tips. Now they got them indestructible soft tips. Tips of a butter. Yeah, those striper stealth rods are awesome. That thing! Nice! That's how you do it. Nice. This chunk fish. Pretty. Pretty. Thank you, Kevin. Send it on. Good job. Uh, good job. Good nice. job. Nice job, Pat. All right, so striper stealth rods. You guys uh, may have seen the other videos. Uh, CTF, Catch the Fever. I helped them a little bit designed a striper stealth rod and the main thing about this rod is it has a lot of backbone but the tip is super soft I mean, look how soft that tip is and it, it's super important because when the fish picks up the bait you want that fish to feel comfortable with it not feel the, the rod go ahead and feel comfortable enough to swallow the bait get it down in its throat swim away and slowly load the rod up so the rod is loaded to the backbone when the fish feels it and the fish takes off it sets the hook comes out, fish gets them in the corner of the mouth, circle hook. We're yeah. using circle hooks everywhere in salt water anyway. I, I use them everywhere in fresh water as well. So 
if you use a circle hook or if you're using any kind of live or cut bait, that's what's great about these striper stealth rods, the super soft tip, and you're not giving up backbone. You can see you got a lot of backbone towards the bottom here. This is the medium heavy. I like the medium heavy the best, but they're all good. I've used them all. And uh, Striper Stealth did give me a code. It is uh, Smedley5. You get a couple bucks off and it supports us too. So they help us and help you, helps everybody. It's a great ride. We'll start with the hot dogs. Bought Nathan, nothing's too good for this crew. Front, prime rib burgers. Dollar store ketchup, dollar store mustard. <laughs> I have a kit with every tool available to man, and I'm burning my fingers. Yeah. No, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I did, did none of that, man. You took all those hot dogs your fingers. Rain bait. A whole bunch of little spearing. See that bird just threw it down and got it? A bunch of little tiny silver sides. All right, gentlemen, there's ketchup, mustard. In the cooler, there's relish. Um, no, he said cook. All right. It's a party without condiments. Condiments. Different condiments too. Thanks, bud. Very nice job. Dad, back him, back him up. Back up. Yes. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 